UFM radio, yeah, the UFO radio show. Users yeah. feedback organization. In these times of indecision, only one show leads the way. UFO, UFO radio. radio. We, we don't ramp and we, we don't play. This year at the DTN conference sees the day. We've had lots going on out of the main session. Uh, we've had a performance from the Raucous Caucus Recovery Chorus. We've got an alternative therapies area. Right now, uh, behind me, there's a session going on um, demonstrating auricular acupuncture for recovery. I don't think the government quite understand what rec recovery entails. Um, so I think, you know, they need to speak to users, they need to speak to people that have been affected by drugs and other substances just to get a real feel for, for, for what it actually uh, means to go through the whole process. Uh, and I think, you know, m so much more needs to be done in the aftercare provision because uh, people are just getting kicked out the back door and, and then, you know, doing what, whatever they need to do, not really have, without having any real directions. You don't just stop taking drugs and, and that's the end, you know, there's, there's got to be something after it, education, redirection to sports, um, I don't know, what else, what else could you, maybe employment, you know, full time pay job, but I, I think, you know, strength in numbers, I can't understand where you're going to get the, the funding for, for all of this, you know, it's a bit, a bit concerning really, and, and the thought that the government don't want to pay, okay, they want recovery and addicts to work with, with addicts or recovering alcoholics to work with alcoholics but um, it's not really going to work is it because nobody's going to get paid and people are going to have to go and do their own jobs to, to make money you know what I mean. I'm particularly distressed to hear that um, people are going to be <coughs> penalised for um, not doing what the government want them to do. I can understand the uh, concept of the big society um, and I don't see why there is no reason why anybody on benefits should, shouldn't at least donate at least 15 hours of their time a week at voluntary work. But as far as recovery goes, I do believe that myself, my belief, I'm not saying anybody else, I believe that there is, stre <coughs> there is, there is strength in numbers and, and unity probably is the right answer. We might have more of a say. I don't think we, we have a say in, in treatment providers or, or treatment services. I, I think they kind of close the doors on us because we, we're recovering addicts and, and they probably think we're trying to skank them or scam them because that, that's, that's what we do probably best, you know what I mean? I'm not a fan of the, the coalition government whatsoever. I think that the, uh, the cuts that they've made to the prison estates Two and a half billion pound is completely ridiculous. I believe that the cuts that they've made across the the, the police um, policing areas, we're talking about losing over forty five thousand <coughs> police officers off our streets. Now, just in Stoke on Trent on its own, they're on about closing down eight police stations, and they're losing three thousand six hundred police officers off the streets. I don't see how that's going to help. They, you know, they come and they stand and they take questions and all the rest of it. And then somebody will get up and make a major, major point, get a big round of applause by the whole room, yeah, and some of the people that's on the road that yeah, and they and they won't um and they just won't do nothing about it. So, you know, they take you know, they kinda of cheat what it seems to me like, yeah. I remember I'm not a professional mind, but this is just my, you know, common man view sort of thing. It seems to me like they pick out parts that they want to listen that fits into what they wanna yeah, but the parts that don't fit, you know, no matter how strong a point it is and how relevant it is, if it don't fit into their whatever, you know, it's, it's just like yeah, flawed, but, but it? not being horrible. When you have people butting in saying comments, whatever they were saying, mm -hmm. that's tarnishing me. I was going to say, us. <coughs> well, it is it's tarnishing us with the, with, with the same brush as him. If I was him stood out there and I heard that, I was thinking, here we go, and you do, they, not him, they was going to be like that. Do you, you know, know what, what I'm saying? Do you know what I wanted to do, Faye? What I felt to do, I felt to get to one of them people, yeah, whilst he was, and pick up the mic and say to the uh, conservative guy, whose name I can't slips my mind, I wanted to say, look, first, yeah, let me apologise for all these out of order shout outs that's happening, mm. yeah, and then I was going to turn to the rest of the people and say, listen, you know, 
you know, we need to make this constructive, really. Yeah, for yeah? real. And, you mm. know, if you do that, you know, if you've got a point, you know, jot it down, remember it for later, and grab a mic, you know. If you're that assertive enough to be st standing up saying, yeah, but that's a load of bullshit, then you, might, you must be assertive enough to go up to a mic person that's got one of them T-shirts with you. That's it. <laughs> you know, and just, you know, because instead of waiting for them to come with, to you with the mic, you know, get assert use mm. your assertiveness that way and go and draw the mic and talk constructively. If you've got something to say, keep it constructive. I believe prisoners do have the right to vote. And a message for the coalition government, if they were given permission to vote, you could guarantee every prisoner in this country would vote for the coalition government because they're making it easier for the criminal. Personally, I'm a fan of, a fan of abstinence simply because... Um, I took methadone, I bought methadone off the streets, I was prescribed Subutex, um, but for me I still had a connection, a relationship with opiates or opioids. You know, for me it still acted on the same way on the receptors on my brain. Um, so I still had that relationship for 10 years of my life, and the only time I broke free was when I, I um, you know, thankfully by the grace of God, um, detoxed. Uh, and haven't looked back. With people that's got ganja, alcohol, drug problems, whatever, do you know what I'm saying? And also, <laughs> he's not getting them worthy. And also... <laughs> Makes a change, folks, because usually on. I'm good. No, and, and also, like, service providers, what they can do to better their service and what they ain't. What, do you know what I'm saying? Because when you're in a service, you don't know how better it's going. You don't get your reviews so much. Do you know what I'm saying? So when you come on the show, and me or him, or there's another geezer called Sid, that's on there, can air for the, for the people, you know what I'm saying? What what we wanted to say? Just for instance, BDP, not so much um of um BME representation. BDP is Bristol Drugs Project, yeah. by the way. Do you know what I'm saying? Not yeah. so much of a BME drugs representation. And do you know what I'm saying? To to mm. focus on BMEs. Do you know what I'm saying? It's mainly a lot of white people and people thinking, oh, if they go in there. So I'll tell you one one experience. But one time I've gone in there and this geezer, he was black like me. But he wasn't like me. I just told this story outside. No, but it's, it's black true. People, you know, <coughs> black, blackness is not just a, fit, a skin colour, really. It, and when I say that, I mean, of course it is. But in the inner city, if you're looking for someone to relate to, yeah, then mm. just having a black face is quite not enough. Because you can be black middle class and then f therefore you're not really in touch. Or you can be, but most of them are not perhaps in touch with... Uh, you know what I mean? Sort ghetto, of, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ghetto, ghetto. That's it, that's not, not suburbia. That's the wrong you know I mean? way of saying it. Ghetto. Seventy percent <coughs> of employers were unprepared to employ people with drug past histories. I'd be very interested to ask that same seventy percent if they'd be prepared to take people on on a voluntary basis. I think the statistics would come down a little bit then, because they're getting free labour and they're getting it for nothing. Victor, <laughs> we want to make you know, can we get ghetto on them though, yeah? Cause sometimes we get ghetto though on the radio, so we have to make them know, yeah, sometimes we get kind of ghetto on the radio, and we have some ghetto chat, so if you want to get in and interpret it, yeah? And we've also got the opportunity, an interactive opportunity, for um, people to make magazines, or see how they'd be able to make a magazine um, for their service user group, um, with a website called Daisy Wheel, um, which enables you to make a magazine by yourself about pretty much anything you want. We do interview uh, service providers, but you know we've also had like you know addicts on the show that's recently come out yeah. of relapse to tell their story and as well. So it's both ends of the scale. And, and, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> you know? We've just launched a website. Uh, it's www.suitteam. That's S-U-I-T E-A-M dot com. And there you can log on, find out more details about the project, find out what we do, get some testimonials, we've got online videos, we've got uh, a user or abuser calculator so people can log on and actually see for themselves how far their addiction has gone. Uh, but not just that, it gives you the specific number for help for your, for your substance, for your drug of choice. So whether it's um, meow meow or legal drug or heroin or uh, stimulant. The number it gives you speci will specifically, um, you know, point you in the right direction for help. It's so frustrating, yeah, because they get up there and they give it all of it, yeah? And at the end of the day, I mean, last year I come here, yeah, and I was really keen and, you know what I mean, and writing all this stuff down and, and on the way home I was thinking, oh, yeah, but, but, you know, they talk all this stuff, yeah, and they kind of move the goalposts and they're, they're governed by other things. So a lot of the things that you've said up there can change like that.